Okay, the very last problem um, is a little bit different. It says Alice and Bob can complete a job in two hours. Alice and Charlie can complete the same job in three hours. Bob and Charlie can complete the same job in four hours. How long will it take if Alice, Bob, and Charlie work together? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, because I Alice, Bob, and Charlie, A, B, and C, I'm going to let A equal the amount of time Alice can get it done alone, can get this job done, whatever it is. I'm going to let B be the amount of time Bob can work alone and get the job done, and C be the amount of time Charlie can get the job done working alone. Okay? Now, remember that it is the time together over the time alone that gives you the fraction of the job. So the very first sentence, Alice and Bob can complete a job in two hours. That means working together, they can get it done in two hours. So they work two hours. Alice can get it done by herself in A hours, so she can get two out of A. That's the time together over the time working alone. Bob working two hours, he can get it done in B hours by himself, so he gets two over B fraction of the job done, and combined they get one job done. Then in the second sentence it says Alice and Charlie can complete the same job in three hours. In three hours, Alice and Charlie. So very similarly, A and C hours for them working alone respectively. Alice, if she works three hours, can get three out of A. Uh, Charlie can get three out of C. And working together, they get one job done. And then uh, the last sentence, or excuse me, this sentence here says Bob and Charlie can complete the same job in four hours. So very similarly, Bob and Charlie, B and C here, so that's going to be four over B plus four over C is equal to one. That's the fraction of the job Bob gets fraction of the job Charlie gets working together, they get one job done. In the other examples, we knew their individual times, we didn't know their times together. We were solving for that. Here it's reversed, and what makes this a little more intriguing is that there's three variables. So you kind of have to do like a system of equations to eliminate a variable. So what I thought of was I was going to try to eliminate the B's. Now the reason I picked the B's here and here is because this is a 2, and that's a 4, and 4 is a multiple of 2. If I take this guy right here and if I multiply by negative 2, all three terms, I get negative 4 over A minus 4 over B equals negative 2. I multiply through by negative 2, this, this, and this. These cancel when I add. So I get negative 4 over A plus 4 over C is equal to 1 and negative 2 is negative 1. Now, I'm going to take uh, let's see, I need to get rid of the, uh, okay, here, these both have A and C. So I'm going to get rid of the A's. Now, I'm getting rid of the A's because this one's positive and this one's negative, but the least common multiple would be 12. So i got to take this one, i got to multiply by 4, I get 12 over A plus 12 over C equals 4, and this one i got to multiply by 3, and I get negative 12 over A, uh, plus 12 over C is equal to negative 3. So now if I add them together, these cancel. I get 12 over C plus 12 over C is 24 over C. 4 plus a negative 3 is 1. If I multiply both sides by C, I get C is equal to 24. That's my first answer, first part of my answer. Now I can take the 24, let's say I go back to this equation right here. I have 3 over A plus 3 over C, which is 24, equals 1. 3 over A plus, this is 1 eighth, equals 1. I'm going to subtract 1 eighth from both sides. And I get 3 over A is equal to 7 eighths, because I have to get a common denominator. This is 8 eighths. And then I can cross multiply. I get 7A equals 24. Divide by 7, I get A is equal to... So I get, a, get this right here, I got C is 24, I got A is equal to 24 sevenths, 24 sevenths, which is 3 and 3 sevenths. So that's the time in hours that they can get this job working alone. And then I got to figure out what B is, so I'm going to use this one this time, this guy, 4 over B plus 4 over C, which is 24. That's why I'm using this one, so I can plug in a whole number. 
is equal to 1. So, uh, 4 over 24 is 1 sixth. If I subtract 1 sixth from both sides, I get 4 over b, 1 minus 1 sixth. This is like 6 six minus 1 sixth is 5 sixths. I'm going to solve for b. I'm going to cross multiply. 5b equals 24 divided by 5. And I get b is equal to 24 over 5, which is what? 4 and 4 fifths. All right. Now, how long would it take if the three of them work together? So if the three of them work together, now notice here, Alice alone, uh, what was it? 3, 24 sevenths or 3 and th 3 sevenths. Bob alone, 24 fifths or 4 and 4 fifths. And then Charlie is really the slow guy, uh, 24. There it is, 24. So now, if T is the time working together for all three of them, I'm going to have three fractions, uh, T over each one of the individual times. So T all over this, which is 24 sevenths, plus T over this, for Bob, that's 24 fifths, plus t over Charlie's time, which is 24, equals 1. Now, before you panic, these are uh, complex fractions, but you can multiply top and bottom by 7, top and bottom by 5. If I multiply top and bottom here by 7, I get 7t over 24. If I multiply top and bottom by 5, I get 5t over 24. And uh, i just leave this one the same. Now, my common denominator is 24. 24 times this side. 24 times the other side. Yikes. So the 24 is canceled, 7t plus the 24 is canceled, 5t plus the 24 is canceled, t equals 24. 13t equals 24. Divide by 13, t is equal to 24 thirteenths, which is 1 and 11 thirteenths. So working together, it takes them 1 and 11 thirteenths hours to do the job. And that one's quite a bit more difficult than the other ones, especially since you had to bring in the idea of solving this system. But that's how it works out, and I couldn't think of a faster way. I even checked with another guy that's real good with this stuff, and he did it pretty much the same exact way, got the same answer. So good luck with this one then.